A Farm Bureau member leads a harrowing ice rescue in the Upper Peninsula. We find out what's on tap for the Michigan Legislature's Ag Committees, and the Michigan Sheep Producers Association has a new director. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. The Michigan Legislature gaveled in its 101st legislative session in January, and two familiar faces will be chairing the House and Senate Agriculture Committees, Senator Kevin Daly and Representative Julie Alexander. So we've got to redo MEEP and make sure that MEEP stays alive. MEEP such an important uh, program for us across the country and across the state of Michigan, but we are, are seen as a as a uh, leader in that uh, department and what we do here is pretty important. So we got to make sure that MEEP came in. You know, MEEP was, uh, as you probably know, was uh, the number one and number two bills that uh, uh, Governor Snyder signed. Uh, I was in the House at that time and those were actually, one of those was my piece of legislation. So that's important to me and we want to make sure that MEEP gets done. Uh, we've got some issues with hemp to make sure we can meet the federal uh, guidelines with hemp, and so we're going to have to make some changes there in the law to help uh, that make sure that happens. I do know that going forward this term, uh, uh, we are going to try to keep animal issues uh, like dog issues and that. Hopefully those will be coming, pets and those type of bills will be coming to the Ag Committee as well because that's so important for animal rights issues. Uh, we don't want those to get tied up into some some situations where they get uh, you know, because they can affect us. What we do with pets will affect animal agriculture in the long run. Meanwhile, in the other chamber, Representative Alexander is anticipating a hearing for House Bill 4031, introduced by Representative Bronna Colley. Colley's bill will amend the Michigan Occupational Safety and Health Act by increasing the reporting time from eight hours to seven days and reducing the civil penalty from $5,000 to $500 when a fatality has occurred on a small family farm. To me, for my OSHA, to have our state government enter in and fine a family for not reporting that loved one's death in a matter of hours with an exorbitant fine is a bill I am very happy and excited again that Representative Colley is picking up and, and it will introduce to our committee in the very near future. To me, that's just, it's not showing sympathy, empathy to that family. It's not good policy. And to me, it's an overreach of our state government. Coming up. A UP Farm Bureau president risks his life to save another's. There's torque. Then there's 1,050 pound feet of available best in class torque. There's towing. Then there's up to 37,000 pounds of available best in class towing. There's backing up a trailer. Then there's backing up with available class exclusive pro trailer backup assist. In other words, there are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty, the most capable heavy duty pickup truck ever built. Don't call him a hero. He's just a man who knows how to get things done. Copper Country Farm Bureau President and Stanton Township First Responder Anthony Lampinen didn't hesitate when he received the call that a man had fallen through the ice at Houghton County Breakers Beach in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. I went direct to the scene and I had some uh, uh, pretty good sized rope in my pickup luckily. I just put in there the week before <clears throat> and I was able to get out on the wall. It, the wall, you know, it's a break wall, you know, for the portage entry or portage canal. And it's uh, it was glare ice, you know, it was rounded ice, and so I was able to get out to where the guy was uh, in the water there, or he was kind of clinging on. At that point, kind of clinging onto the edge of the the wall, and I was able to get the rope down to him. And then uh, once I got to him, he was able to kind of help pull him up. He climbed up on top, and then uh, at that point, the DNR officer and sheriff's deputy had gotten there. And we were, they had another rope, and we were able to throw ropes back and forth to help get uh, the guy off. Lampinen was grateful they were able to pull the 22-year-old man from the water, knowing that the cold and icy conditions on that January day left little time for error. The Houghton County Sheriff's Department gave life-saving award plaques to Lampinen and two other first responders. There was three of us that got it, the conservation officer, the sheriff's deputy, and I, and uh, as a warden, like I had said at that point, you know, they asked about, you know, how you feel, and I, you know, and I had mentioned then, and I'll mention again that we don't do it for the honor. The honor is God's honor. 
Lampinen says working with his brother and father on their beef and sheep farm in Atlantic Mine, Michigan, is good preparation for responding to emergency situations. A lot of times on the farm, you know, sometimes you just got to make things work. You know, middle of hay season, you know, rain's come and something breaks down, you just got to fix it. You know, you, you just can't just say, okay, I'll wait till next, tomorrow or next day or something. And a lot of times on, you know, some of these medical or fire calls, you know, accident scenes, you just got to make things work. And uh, I think that, you know, it's a different outlook, you know, that y- you get, you know, versus, okay, let, let's call someone to fix it. Well, something you don't got the time or you are the person that getting called, you know, so the, the, the farm life definitely does help that kind of stuff. Up next, Commodity Classic introduces its 2021 agenda. Yep, we cover Michigan from sandbars to sand dunes, cider mills to skiing hills and farm towns to downtowns. We cover up north, and yep, we know exactly where that is. Yep, we cover Michigan because we're Michigan's insurance company. The Commodity Classic in its 25th year is being presented in a digital format. The three-day event, planned for March 2nd through the 5th, will feature the same top-quality educational sessions and farmer networking opportunities as years past. The registration fee is waived for the first 5,000 farmers who sign up. Registration information and the full schedule of events can be found online at commodityclassic.com. The U.S. International Trade Commission has decided not to move forward with setting tariffs or quotas on blueberry imports, despite pleas from producers and politicians. Blueberry growers here in Michigan and across the country say their operating returns fell by nearly one-third between 2015 and 2019 because of cheaper blueberries imported from other countries. Samantha Ludlam is the new executive director of the Michigan Sheep Producers Association, replacing Maury Kircher, who recently retired from the position after 10 years of service. Ludlam officially assumed responsibilities on January 15th after assisting with the 2021 virtual Michigan Shepherd Weekend event. For more news and videos, visit michiganfarmnews.com or the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.